Okay, now we're going to um, cover the facial bones. Uh, so you have um, 14 facial bones um, that comprise um, uh, this part of your um, of your head along with the cranial bones that we just talked about. Um, start with, you've got two nasal bones, one on either side here, um, that form the superior aspect of your nose. Um, you have two maxilla bones, uh, which form uh, the top part of your jaw here. So you've got a left um, maxilla and a right maxilla. Uh, so a couple um, interesting things that we can um, find on the um, maxillary bones, these small little holes that are um, just underneath the orbits, these are called infraorbital foramen. Okay, so anytime you have the name foramen, it means a hole. And infraorbital is going to mean below the orbits. So those are your infraorbital foramen. Again, they're a um, passageway for um, nerves. And we also have, um, if we look anteriorly at the um, maxillary bones or the maxilla, you can see this prominence here and here. This is the zygomatic process of the um, maxilla and what it's doing is it's traveling more posterior and a little bit lateral to meet up with um, the cheekbone as well as the um, zygomatic process of the temporal bone as well. Okay. We also have, if you look um, underneath, this is the um, top, this is the roof of your mouth, this is the hard palate and the anterior uh, two-thirds of the hard palate is formed by the structure um, called the palatine process which is part of the maxilla bone so the palatine process is this landmark here part of the maxillary uh, bone and forms the anterior aspect of the hard palate on the roof of your mouth okay if we look anteriorly again we have this bone here and this is the right zygomatic bone. This would be the left zygomatic bone. So this bone forms uh, your cheekbone as well as the lateral wall of your orbit. And that's the most prominent um, area of your cheekbone formed by the zygomatic bones. We also have the mandible, which is gonna be this bone here. So this is your lower jaw. This is your mandible. And a couple things here, we've got the mandibular condyle, which is going to be this bony prominence that fits into the um, mandibular fossa, uh, or the indented part of the temporal bone. So this part here is the mandibular condyle, um, also known as the condylar process. And again, it's what forms the articulation with the fossa to form your TMJ, creates a hinge joint here so that you can so that you can eat. Um, if we come a little anterior to that, we have this um, prominence here. This is called the coronoid process. And then you can see this indented area in between those two processes. And this indented area is called the mandibular notch. Okay. We have two lacrimal bones, which are gonna be uh, just um, in, along the medial aspect of the um, orbital cavity, um, small bones here and here, those are lacrimal bones, and two palatine bones, which if we look again at the hard palate, they're going to form the posterior aspect of the hard palate. So if you're putting things together, the hard palate is formed by the palatine process of the maxilla and the palatine bones more posteriorly. Now if we look anteriorly at the skull and focus in on the nasal cavity we can see these um, bony prominences that are the most inferior lateral prominences. Those two are the inferior nasal concha and um, those are separate bones, not to be confused with the um, middle or even superior nasal concha, um, which are part of the ethmoid bone. We talked about those earlier. So 
these two, the ones that are most inferior, are the two inferior nasal concha. And then the um, inferior aspect of the nasal septum is the vomer. So that's gonna be the bone um, right in the middle of the nasal septum, again, dividing the nasal cavity into a left half and a right half. So the nasal cavity is divided by um, two bones coming together. We have vomer um, inferiorly, and superiorly we have perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. Both of those together form uh, the nasal septum.